Okay. Today in the radiology spotter series that we do on the dam series channel of YouTube, I would uh, choose a very difficult topic which is uh, evaluation of inborn error of metabolism and I'm particularly looking at disorders which have gray matter involvement. Okay. Now the idea is whenever you see a inborn uh, patient with inborn error of metabolism and you see the MRI, the first thing that you have to answer is, is the disease involving the gray matter or the white matter? So what are the points that go in favor of a gray matter disease? You will have cortical thinning, prominent cortical sulci, and there can be white matter involvement because of valerian degeneration. Now that is a very tricky thing to believe and understand that in white matter disorders you have white matter involvement. In gray matter disorders also there is white matter involvement because of valerian degeneration. Now how to differentiate between the two? The idea is look at mass effect, look at uh, volume loss. A white matter disorder would have some component of inflammation in the white matter, some uh, the mass, there would be the maintained volume in white matter. So whenever you see lo uh, abnormal signal in the white matter with no evidence of volume loss and that is why the doing MRI in an early phase of the disease is very important to characterize the disease on MRI. So if you see white matter signal abnormality with uh, maintained volume, we think of white matter disorder. Here, when we see cortical thinning, prominent sulci with valerian degeneration, some volume loss in the white matter, we think of gray matter disorder. Slightly tricky, but let us see. We also look for deep gray matter involvement in gray matter disease. So let us look at the first image and try and get the differential. So in this gray matter disorder, you can see involvement of the striatum you can see involvement of the chorid nucleus and the putamen. Chorid nucleus, putamen. So what do you think? So whenever we see the involvement of striatum, that means the chorid and the putamen, so we think of disorders like mitochondrial disorders like Lee syndrome, Melas, glutaric aciduria, propenic acidemia, Wilson's disease, asphyxia, hypoglycemia. Okay? So that is how we evaluate first. Now let me load another image for you. Next is a T2 weighted MRI image where you can see T2 shortening, you can see hypointensity in the periphery of the globus pallidus with hyperintensity in the center. Okay, So that means you can see T2 shortening with central T2 prolongation primarily involving the globus pallidus. Then we think of disorders like pentothenate kinase associated neuropathy which is formally called as Helleworthen's past disease and this appearance is classically called as the eye of the tiger appearance. Now look at this image. In the next image, I'll try to show you flare and T2 weighted axial images. So this is the flare image, T2 weighted axial image, and you can see involvement of the globus pallidus. So you can actually see hyperintense signal in the globus pallidus on T2 weighted image. Hyperintense on T2 and flare image. So whenever we see such an appearance, the differential diagnosis that comes to our mind is metabolic diseases like succinate, semi-aldehyde, dehydrogenase deficiency, methyl menonic acidemia, pyruvate dehydrogenase deficiency, carbon monoxide poisoning, and a chronic phase of kernic terrace. Now compare it with this. Now I'll try to load an image where I'll show you T1 weighted image axial and T2 weighted axial image of a patient where you can see the globus pallidus is hyper intense on T1 weighted image and normal on T2 weighted image. So you can see T1 hyper intensity of globus pallidus with a normal T2 signal. We think of disorders like chronic hepatic disease which can lead to such an appearance in the MRI. However, if we compare it with another patient in whom you can see hyper intense signal on T1 and hyper intense on T2 weighted image also, then we think of disorders like acute hyperbilirubinemia of infancy, SLE, hemolytic uremic syndrome. A point to remember is in hemolytic uremic syndrome, there is also associated edema in the external capsule, extreme capsule and the claustrum area. So that is a very key finding to remember. And what are the disorders which have primarily cortical involvement? These disorders which show cortical thinning with enlarged cortical sulci like neuronal steroid lipofuscinosis, mucolipidosis, glycogen storage diseases, GM gangliosidosis. So that was our intent to discuss gray matter disorders today on this episode of Radiology Spotter series on Dam's Daily channel of YouTube. I would again recommend that you subscribe to our channel Dam's Daily for more such educational videos in future. Thank you very much.